and welcome to Holy Eucharist for Monday, Thursday for the Episcopal Church of the Resurrection. Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins in your order of worship. We're on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand as you are able. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining it. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you in the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm appointed for this morning is a portion of Psalm 116. Let's read it in unison. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ears to me whenever I call upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace, God. 
reading of the gospel. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. When the hour had come, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Meals are important. Sure, of course, for the basic and functional reasons we need to eat to fuel our bodies and minds to go about the business of our lives. And of course, we all have connections to food that have nothing whatsoever to do with nutrition or diet, the way that some dishes define seasons or make a specific meal complete for us. Foods we associate with times or places. And of course, we all have our favorites. Most of us have memories of big occasions, birthdays, holidays, other celebrations, planned or impromptu. And many of those memories begin or center at a table. But more so important are the people we share meals with. Family, friends, people from churches, or strangers we happen to meet by chance across a table. In the past year of all the things that have changed for us, How we share a table is one of the biggest, which for me at least truly makes me reconsider what it means to share a meal. The Gospels are full of shared meals, both in accounts and parables, and such a table and meal are at the center of tonight's Gospel reading. At this table, Jesus gathers with his disciples for what he knows will be his last meal with them. Jesus has already been trying to prepare those closest to him for what is coming, for the events that will unfold in just moments from this table. He's tried to help them understand what will happen, but more importantly, he's tried to teach them how to live with God at the center of their lives. He's tried to teach them how to be with each other and how to love each other. And there are moments where those disciples shine, the moments where they seem to get it, to grasp what they've been taught. 
and yet there are others where they're truly human. They still don't truly understand, not about discipleship, nor about what's coming, what it all will mean. And how could they? Even at this last meal, they're comparing themselves to one another, worrying about who is the greatest. Worries that will soon be replaced. During this last meal, Jesus urges them to remember what he's taught them, what they should already know. He gently reminds them that his time with them is quickly drawing to a close. He urges them to love each other and issues one last command, to continue gathering as a community, a community that is set apart, a community that belongs exclusively to God and to the kingdom of God, rather than to society or even family to gather and remember who it is they followed and should continue to follow even after he's no longer with them. He commands them to continue gathering and to continue sharing a meal. This act of gathering will evolve. This meal will look different as time progresses with a different kind of table. It will, as commanded, be the point we remember and will become the central act of worship and focus for communities from the earliest days of what we have come to call the church, just as Paul records in his letter to the Corinthians. Of all the things we are commanded, of all the things as followers of Christ we are to do, this is the one act we are fundamentally called to do as the church, as a gathered corporate body. That is not only something we physically do, but in turn defines who we are and names who we follow. When we gather for this sacred mystery, no matter what we have going on in our lives, no matter how we may feel, if we're sad, distracted, joyful or restless, focused or scattered, from the moment we leave our homes and direct our steps to where we will gather, no matter where that gathering may take place, to participate in this Thanksgiving, we become the church. This simple, outward, visible sign is the path to abundant, unseen spiritual grace. Our participation in this memorial joins us with the voices of heaven, as well as all the voices throughout time that recall that one incredible shared meal and be to one as gathered at that table. Our participating in this symbolic, simple meal joins us to that ancient, actual one. And we're a part of that just by showing up. We don't have to be in the mood. We don't have to be focused or in tune or any of the other expectations we may pile on ourselves for participation. The shoulds we carry about with us. Now, sometimes we may be more aware of that grace. We may feel connections when we're prepared and desire worship. But sometimes that grace may also surprise us, overtake us when we're least expecting it. And sometimes it will simply feel like sharing a little bit of bread with friends. But that doesn't make it any less sacred. Sometimes all the more so, most especially at a time when gathering has looked and felt different, when we're receiving in one kind and sharing or being together as we normally would be hasn't been possible. If anything, after these past days, I think we have been asked to consider how sharing a bit of bread with friends really is sacred, and how missing that act has revealed to us just how important it can be as a reminder, if we were already aware, or as a whole new depth of understanding of what it means to each of us. Whatever that understanding, whatever that revelation, this is the Lord's table. All are welcome at this table, the broken along with the whole the joyful and the grieving, the lonely, the sad, those who doubt, the hungry and the full, those who are seeking, those who are longing, those who are numb and those who wish they were. All are equal at this table. At this table, all are welcome. Thanks be to God. Amen.
continuing in your service bulletin or turning to page 358. Let us stand together and reaffirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, and one being the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came to harvest power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form one, found in your bulletin or on page 383. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Bishop, Glenda, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For Joe, our President, for Kay, our Governor, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, and oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of all our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our life in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, to thee O Lord, Lord our God. God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins with the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. Peace, my friends. Eucharistic Prayer C continues in your bulletin or begins on page 369 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us to be the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you received your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with a heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts, Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
after supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our mothers and fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God.
The post-communion prayer begins in your order of worship or on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, remember, God made you. God sees you. God knows you. And God loves you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.